Bonjour à tous, bienvenue pour une nouvelle leçon de French with Alicia. J'espère que vous êtes en forme. Comme prévu, aujourd'hui, je voudrais vous parler des trois différentes valeurs du « on ». Vous connaissez le « on » comme forme informelle du « nous ». So I told you before that we use « on » as a « we » when we speak, uh, especially when we speak. So uh, instead of saying « we uh, » We go to the restaurant every, every Tuesday. I could say literally, nous allons au restaurant chaque mardi. But I'd rather say when I'm speaking, on va au restaurant chaque mardi. On works as a nous, but when you, when you conjugate it, it works as il ou elle. That's the only tricky thing really. Think that on works as he or she, so third person singular avec une valeur de « nous ». And it's, it's rather informal. Yeah. And it's also the most, common, the most common way to speak with the « on » instead of « we that, ». That's what you know. For example, uh, on est fatigué. On est fatigué. We are tired. On est allé au ciné. We went to the cinema. On adore le jazz. We love jazz music. Okay, this you know. It can also be used in, um, with more general facts, more impersonal, like I'm not talking and I don't have a particular subject in mind when I mention it. Concrete example. Well, usually in English, I think that you would translate it with they or you. Let's see, let's see uh, uh, how it works. For example, you would say, In, in France, they eat a lot of cheese. Yeah? We could say, en France, ils mangent beaucoup de fromage. Ils se réfèrent aux Français, évidemment. But you can also say, and it's very common, en France, on mange beaucoup de fromage. And in that case, of course, in my case, it's a bit weird because I'm French, so it could definitely be a on. Uh, including on, in which I include myself. We eat a lot of cheese. But no, imagine I'm not French. And I say, en France, on mange beaucoup de fromage. It's, it's like a they. They eat a lot of cheese. Yeah, and I, and I use this on a bit as an impersonal, mm, I don't have a definite subject, so I just go for on. Yeah. Uh, in this family, they never watch TV. So the literal translation that, again, works in French, like, dans cette famille, ils ne regardent jamais la télévision. Cool. But I can perfectly say as well, and, and you might hear it, you may, dans cette famille, on ne regarde jamais la télévision. On. You know, as a whole, uh, I know that I'm referring to the members of the family, but I mean it's a on, a bit more general, impersonal, indistinct subjects. On ne regarde pas la télévision dans cette famille. That's fine, just as much as il, again. Um, and then, yeah, so that's, that's the sentences where this on uh, would generally be translated by a they in English. And then I told you it can also be translated by a you, in which case, for example, I think in, in that case that would be a you in, in English. If you want to say like, um, you can't say something like that. But I'm not talking to you directly. Is, is just a general you in English. Like, oh, you, you can't say that, and I'm not directing to you. Then in French, you would say, on ne peut pas dire quelque chose comme ça. On ne peut pas dire quelque chose comme ça. You can't say something like that. But it's a mm, general. Or, for example, on ne sait pas, on ne sait pas s'il est gentil ou méchant. Like, in the end, you don't know if he is nice or mean. You don't know. It's definitely not a you, you, I'm talking to. It's a general you. Well, in that case, we go for on. On ne sait pas s'il est gentil ou méchant. On ne sait jamais. Ah, yeah, I put this one too. On ne sait jamais. You never know. On ne sait jamais. On ne sait jamais. I'm eating the ne. On ne sait jamais. I think we even say on ne sait jamais a lot. Very informal, but we definitely say that. On ne sait jamais. You never know. It's good to know this one because it's a typical one 
And then the other use of un would be would be translated in a, with a passive way, passive form, passive form in English. Example, on a trouvé le trésor. On a trouvé le trésor. The treasure was found. You would definitely say that in English. On a trouvé le trésor. The treasure was found. On a volé la voiture du voisin. On a volé la voiture du voisin. So the neighbor's car was stolen. On a volé la voiture du voisin. I, I don't know who did it, so this is definitely an impersonal thing. On a volé la voiture du voisin. In English, you would put the neighbor's car as the main thing of the sentence. And you wouldn't even mention, like, it would be like saying the neighbor's car was stolen by someone. Yeah. Or, yeah, or someone stole the neighbor's car, of course. Someone stole the neighbor's car. On a volé la voiture du voisin. Yeah, with the last one I put, it's definitely a someone that you would give in English. On m'a appelé, mais je ne sais pas qui c'est. On m'a appelé. So someone called me, but I don't know who, who it was. On m'a appelé, mais je ne sais pas qui c'est ou qui c'était. That's it for the different use of, of on. I think there is not uh, more to it. Sometimes I don't give you all the info in, in one, but this time I think that, yes, on, on est fatigué, on va au cinéma, on aime uh, this thing, on, okay. Remember just with that, that you use it a lot when you speak and that you must not be too confused. Like, oh, it's a on informal, but it works as a we. Uh, on allons au cinéma, very common mistake, doesn't work. On va au cinéma. On goes together in the, when you conjugate, dans la conjugaison, it goes together with il, elle. Il, elle, on. Third person. Avec une valeur de nous. On est fatigué, on adore, on va, on écrit, on... Ok, first one. Second one was the one, as I told you, where there is not, you don't have a particular subject uh, in mind. You know the subject. Like, if I say in France, I'm talking about the French. If I say in this family, I'm talking about the members of the family. So it's not completely uh, impersonal or that I have no idea who did it, like in the last case. But it's more general. Like, en France, on mange beaucoup de fromage. Dans cette famille, on ne regarde pas la télévision. Uh, on ne sait jamais. Uh, that's different. On ne sait jamais. You never know. That's different. That's just a general expression that goes with on. Uh, on ne peut pas dire s'il si est gentil ou méchant. It's a on like, uh, it's, it's probably a, a je, but uh, it's, you put it in a more in instinct. Like, on ne peut pas dire s'il si est gentil ou méchant. And then the last one, that is clearly translated or by a someone or with a passive form. On a trouvé le trésor. The treasure was found. On a volé la voiture du voisin. The neighbor's car was stolen. On m'a appelé, mais je ne sais pas qui c'est. I was phoned, no. Someone phoned me, but I don't know who it is or who it was. That's about it with on. What can I tell you about on? Remember the pronunciation, of course. Clearly a very French nasal sound. So careful with that. And that's all. That's all for today. You've got the on done out of the way. Next lesson will be about to. To. Uh, T-O-U-T It means so many things and it has so many nature, nature, as we say in French. It can be an adjective, an adverb, un pronom, un substantif, so uh, complicated. But uh, I will teach you how it works when it's an adjective indéfini. Again, I know it's a bit of a technical thing. You might not even want to know that it's adjective indéfini in this case, but it's just to make it clear to you. Uh, I will explain how to, T-O-U-T, works and changes in the sentences when it works as adjective indéfini. Not a very difficult one either. Uh, that would be one of the last lessons with uh, only vocab, vocab, vocab. One more. And then I go back, of course, to passé composé, exceptions with passé composé, and imparfait. That's it, to give you an idea. Uh, 
remember to remember to sign up uh, on French with Alicia. We now have the the app. The app is out. Uh, and it's amazing. It's amazing to practice with concrete exercises, podcasts, listenings, work, worksheets, uh, re everything. It's very complete. It's great to apply everything you've been learning so far, I hope, uh, through these, uh, these videos. So do not hesitate and, and let us know how it goes and if you need any help or anything. Really happy to help. Thank you very much for your attention, guys. À très bientôt pour une nouvelle leçon de French with Alicia. Prenez soin de vous. Au revoir.